Hey everyone, in this video we're going to use how to use OpenAI in your clay tables. And this is probably going to be a very long video because I'm going to do all of this live. Uh, so I'm going to start off the video with fundamentally how the OpenAI integration works and then we're going to get into some use cases. So everybody who wants to see how it works can watch the beginning of the video and then you can watch use cases for after. The use cases we're going to go over is how to personalize uh, emails based off of somebody's LinkedIn profile, how to personalize emails based based off of the company description, how to personalize emails based off of, say, something that we found using a Google snippet like Google, uh, no, like Glassdoor reviews. And then finally, we're going to generate a completely AI generated email, uh, f you know, from scratch using OpenAI. So the way that we use this is we're going to go to Enrich Data and we're going to click on AI and GPT-3 or we'll go to Buy Provider. Uh, whoops. OpenAI, or we could type in the top OpenAI. And we could see, um, whoops, we have three options here. Generate image, which is using Dolly to generate images. Um, more of like a fun thing to do with, with OpenAI, not necessarily a whole lot of use cases uh, off the top of my head for this video. We can edit text to fix spelling mistakes, or we can complete prompts. So for the most part, you're gonna be using complete prompts. Um, editing text is, of course, great uh, if you want to get some spelling mistakes out of there. But uh, for, in this video, we're mostly going to go over complete prompts as editing text is very similar to doing that. So we will open up the complete prompt. Make sure that you have your AI, uh, OpenAI API key inserted. And here we're going to get into the prompt. Now, prompting is the most important part of the integration. If you don't prompt correctly, you're not going to get anything back. And so when you prompt, you want to be like, you want to be explaining what you want to a fifth grader. Very, very specific. Don't leave anything out. Tell it exactly what you want. Um, I've seen videos of people asking things, um, you know, very generally about AI and it's still working, but I still hold true since we're going to be running this off of, you know, 200 profiles at once that you want to be very, very specific. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, create a personalized line based off of somebody's LinkedIn summary. So what we can do is we can say, uh, tell me what this person's job focus is based off of this input. Here is the input. And then we're going to map from finding a rich person from Google search. We're going to map their experience, but we're going to go to latest experience. And then we're going to pull their summary. And so they don't have a summary here, but that's a little unfortunate, but that's fine. Now we've inputted the summary. This is the job description that they have inputted for their LinkedIn profile. So here's the summary. And then we're going to say, write a one sentence summary of their job focus in under 10 to 15 words. And then let's say start each sentence with, I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, it seems like you are responsible for that, that, that. And now we are going to let it run. So it's automatically using the, the highest tier model. Um, for, for things like this, I definitely would, cons I would definitely just use the default DaVinci 3. Uh, to do this creativity don't necessarily need to put anything for that um, and we'll hit save changes so now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to map everyone's summary from their latest experience um wow a lot of them have you know what let's go back and change the mapping my apologies everyone let's go back and change the mapping to their overall summary because i i'm going to assume that not many people actually have that summary filled out so let's use this summary. Great. And then hit save changes. And now we're going to run a couple of these. 
so that we can review. This actually is not the one we're going to use. I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, it seems like you're responsible for investing and mentoring early stage startups, driving growth within the companies, and teaching compassion in elementary schools. I don't know about you guys, but that's a great line. That it, 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 That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's uh, also pull this out so we can read it. Uh, all right, let's read another one. I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, it seems like you are responsible for developing strategies and scenarios within organizations to renew business and improve performance through technologies and initiatives. Awesome. So the only thing it seems like it's not listening to here is the 10 to 15 thing. Uh, words. I noticed in LinkedIn, it seems like you're responsible for investing, coaching, and advising technology startups and other stage companies. Love it. Great. Oh, so this is interesting. We got different outputs, which is, oh, yes, this is exactly what I wanted to show. See how we gave it the same inputs because on my list here, I have two LinkedIn's, but we got different outputs. This is so important for when we go over AI generating a full, a full email. So now uh, let's just read one more to just go over it. Seems like on your LinkedIn profile, I notice you are responsible for leading Citibank as the chief executive managing global consumer and institutional businesses. Uh, you know, maybe not the best one we've seen, but I would still ship that. that. That's a good one too. Okay. Now let's talk about the company description, right? So here we have the company description. And again, we can just create a prompt for it. And we can say, um, tell me what this company's mission is based on this input. Again, very, very similar. Here is the input. And then we're going to grab Enrich Company. We will grab, oh, geez. The description, there it is. We're going to grab the description and then we will say, here's the input. Uh, please, I still say please, but I guess you don't need to use manners. Please give me a line with 10 to 15 words that starts with, it looks like your mission at, and let's put the company name in there. Let's get a little crazy is to blank. Let's see, save changes. Hold on, and I'm just gonna show the, the rest of these, right? So model, stuff, okay, yeah, good. And now let's run a couple, right? So all of these companies are companies that we're familiar with, so we should be able to, all right, let's open these up. It looks like your mission at LinkedIn is to help connect professionals around the world to advance their success. Yes, love it. Apple. It looks like your mission at Apple is to evolutionize, revolutionize technology, faster creativity, and empower people around the world for a ground program. Nailed it. Uh, EY. Oh, this is going to be fun. What are, what are the accountants doing? Looks like your mission at EY is to build a better world through trust, assurance, and technology to create long-term value. Great. All right. Tesla. It looks like your mission at Tesla is to sell, accelerate the global transition to a zero emission and sustainable energy future. For all of these, it's nailing it. Um, I'm kind of curious for Netflix, so let's just run that. Let's see if there's any other ones. Nestle, what are we going to do with food? Right, let's just open these up. Love it. Pfft, love it. Oh, geez, these are great. Okay, so now that's how you would personalize. And this is just one example. Like, this is all based off of your creativity. Whatever you can come up with, you can, you can do. So now the next thing that we're going to do is... Um, you can also feed the AI Google snippets, which is a little bit more difficult, but we're going to go over right now. So if we were to create a Google search and I want to find these companies' Glassdoor reviews, I could say site glassdoor.com and then I'm going to put in quotes the company name and then I'm also going to put employee reviews just to make sure we get that page. But I just want one. We don't need to go nuts. We're going to hit save changes. And so now we're going to run this again. And you're going to notice we get some nice things in the snippet. The other thing that AI is really, really good at doing is we can also ingest data and see how we have this data snippet over here. So it's saying LinkedIn has an overall rating of, rating of 4.5 out of 5. 
based on over 5,880 reviews. We have access to this entire snippet. And if we wanted more data from the web page, we could do that with um, the Scrape website integration here. If you wanted even more data from the page, you could just point it at this page, right? But look, all of these things that we need perfectly we have inside of this snippet. So we're actually going to create a new column and we're going to map it. And this is another awesome use case for AI where we can jump in, we can ask it to complete the prompt, and we can literally say, from this input, tell me what is the uh, employee rating for the company. Only answer in numerical values. Okay, and then we're going to take the input, which so now the problem that we're solving here is all of this data comes back in any way that Google wants to give it to us. But we can use AI to normalize the data and give us back exactly what we're looking for instead. So let's see if I successfully created this prompt. 4.5, nailed it. 4.2, nailed it. 4.5, nailed it. 3.9, yeah, the accountants aren't happy over there. Tesla, 3.6. Ooh, all right, so interesting. We have this 3.6 out of 5 over here. Um, maybe I'd go into the prompting and just say, you know, just the number. Let's see. City, 3.9 out of 5. I don't know why it didn't listen to numerical values, but that's what I would, ha I would you know, be going into. So see how this is also a great way to clean up this data. Because if you look at this data, see how it says LinkedIn has an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5. But over here for Deloitte, it, it, we, we wouldn't be able to use this data and normally pull things out of it, but we still got the rating pulled out. And actually, let's even check if that's even the one. Uh, if the Loom video didn't come to the Glassdoor page, I'm checking Deloitte right now, and that is correct. So uh, it still got it, and it's cleaning up all of this data. Now, so again, we've gone over how to enrich a person's uh, a, like LinkedIn profile and write a first line, how to target their LinkedIn company description and write a first line, how to ingest data and normalize that data using AI in a way that we wouldn't be able to, to do normally. And now we're going to talk about how could we prompt it to write a full email. And I'm still working on this. So follow along because I, I this is like the goal that I'm trying to work on. And the reason I'm working on it so hard is because notice how here we have the same input. This was for LinkedIn. We had the same input. It looks like your mission at LinkedIn is to help connect. Oh, wait, no, this wasn't the one. So sorry. This input is for Jeff Wiener. We have two Jeff Wieners, right? I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, it seems like you're responsible for blah, 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 blah. Again, Jeff Wiener. I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, it seems like blah, blah, blah. But see how this is different than the first one. Now, this is what I'm extremely, extremely interested in is because email service providers are starting to crack down on people who are using the SMTP and IMAP feature to send emails. And also, if they see that your email is basically the same thing, it's just the first name, company name, and maybe a couple other snippets are, are different, they're cracking down on these things. What AI gives us the ability to do is say, hey, you write this, and a lot of the times it's going to come out, or most of the time, it's going to come out 100% unique every time. So we can give it the same input and we get out different outputs for our emails. So let's jump over here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt it and I'm going to say, uh, write a casual email. This word is the best I've found for sales because if you tell it to write a sales email, it's going to barf out something from 2011. Write a casual email with 50 to 70 words um, that includes the company description input and follows this template. So notice I'm calling it a company description input and a template. So the company description input is this. And then we're going to put the company description input in here. Oh my gosh, I lost this the other time. Yeah, okay. Is this, this is the company description input. The template is this. Uh, Hello, first name. The lavender guys just came out with uh, 
hello is the best thing to say in front of a sales email. Drop it a little knowledge from their data. Hello, first name. I noticed that your company is focused on solving world hunger. Curious how you are managing your bookkeeping to get to that goal. Would it be helpful if someone were to manage keeping for you? Obviously not not the world's greatest email. I'm just trying to get out an example here. Um, but so we're saying like, this is the template that I want you to follow. What I would do is take one of your successful emails from the past and insert it here. And then um, a couple other things we're going to do. It follows this, uh, the company description uh, that includes the, I didn't include the company name. So I'm going to do the company name, the company description input. And then I'm going to put the company name is this. And we're going to put in their company name and the company description and then the template. And then let's see how it goes. Maybe we can let it run a little bit more. But let's test some of these. All right, perfect. So I put <laughs> put the company name as the the first name here. So we would we would um we could actually you know what we could do to increase this prompting here is it would be um the company name is this that includes the company name the contacts name input and then we'll we'll make a contact name input the con tax name input is, and then we'll throw it in from here. Um, the contacts name input is great. And then we'll put a space there. All right, let's hit save changes and let this run again. And now let's look at the prompt here. Hello, Noel. I noticed that your company HSBC is focused on opening up a world of opportunity for customers and the planet. I'm curious how you're managing your bookkeeping to make it happen. Uh, a little light, a little general, but obviously taken from their company description. I noticed that your company Siemens AG is a global technology powerhouse that has stood for engineering excellence innovation. I was wondering if it would be helpful if someone were to manage to further drive out your goals. Solving world hunger. Wow. Okay. Love it. I oh, wow. Okay, great. Um, the latest book somewhere. Clearly making an impact. So obviously we could do some more prompting here to make it even better. And obviously we could put in it, ways I would improve this is give it more data, prompt it even better, give it a better template. The template I gave was was not that great. But you could obviously see that we are, you know, on the cusp of you know, replacing this copywriting and just being able to say, hey, here's the template, here's all of the data that you should ingest you know, go for it. And so that is how we would write personalized lines based off of somebody's LinkedIn summary, based off of their company uh, description, ingest data and normalize some of that data, and then how we'd write a completely AI generated email. Uh, and if you have any questions, you could always reach us at friends at clay.run, or you could join our Slack community at clay.com backslash Slack, where we're talking about this stuff on the daily. Can't wait to see you in there. Thanks, everyone.